Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Circle of the World podcast, where we discuss Joe Abercrombie's first law series. I am one of your hosts, Lord Chamberlain Jeffrey, and here are my co-hosts, Art Lecter George, and Harrison, the Adeptus Historical. As you all know, we're covering The Blade itself, the first book in the original trilogy. We'll be covering the remarkable talents of Brother Longfoot and her kind fight everything on this episode. So let's get started. Just want to first off thank you guys again for all your support. We hope you appreciate and enjoyed the last episode we did, which is the spoiler special episode where we talked about foreshadowing, tinfoil thoughts, especially from George. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just our, the usual buffoonery. Uh, we hope you really, uh, you know, enjoy that. <clears throat> we should uh, just, I think, I don't know how many more episodes we should do it, guys, but we should probably just shout out the artists again. Just, you know, uh, Barrett Freinbeier and design.at.j on Instagram for the banner art. You know, they're good guys, and their work is of a high quality, right? <laughs> a, a certain caliber. Yes. <laughs> a certain caliber, yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, check them out and please, again, we will keep bothering you about this, but just, you know, join us on social media, follow us, be part of the herd and our YouTube page. You know, we will be, you know, we're, we're releasing new content there. I think by the time this episode's released, we will have George's first theory Mm -hmm. and it will be, uh. Well, fun one. <laughs> you've, you guys have already firmly debunked it, but you know it's still going to be a fun video to make. So, mm-hmm. look that's right, that. we debunked it. You're freaking <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but let's let's save that for the video. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, the arch lector uh, doesn't take too much offense and uh, have me and Harrison floating by the docks. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, our first no promises, Jeff. Oh, go oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> My safety is not guaranteed, apparently. I Um, can't even fight back. (laughs) (laughs) Do I at least get a drink before I die? Nope, sorry. A drink, a drink, a drink. Oh, Lord. Um, Since we're doing two chapters today, we're going to lead off with our first segment, which is the best meme of the week. George, you want to take this off? Sure. So uh, we've got a user, C on Reddit who's put a nice meme which looks like just the uh the content section of a chemistry textbook but it's got like the properties of gases the first law the fir- and the second law and the title is just by the dead this textbook is going to teach me how to be a magi <laughs> <laughs> and yeah that pretty much yeah mm, it's about that a- complicated <laughs> I wonder what the third law is. Do you know, Harrison? <laughs> Mr. There, there is no third law. There's there always no a two. Third law. Oh, wow. It's, a, it's pretty straightforward. There's an extra one in the book, so there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the third law is uh, do whatever the mage I tell you, otherwise you explode. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought it was don't be a cunt, but okay. <laughs> I did, nobody follows that one. <laughs> Everyone. Let me bias breaks all three laws. So. Oh. No, George. George. Oh my god! All right, (laughs) the many remarkable talents of Uh, Brother Long. (laughs) The Lord. The so our first chapter read through is the remarkable talents of Brother Longfoot, and so here we meet as integral, important, and borderline racist (laughs) character. (laughs) Uh, So uh, Logan wakes up. Uh, you know, he's groggy, he's tired, he's hot. Adju was just, it's like New York City or Washington, D.C. in the summer. Yeah, and, he, yeah. and he, he's like from Siberia, so. Yeah, he is not built for this. He's George on an 85 <laughs> degree day. Yeah, definitely. And definitely be waking up like already tired because you just, mm-hmm. you've just mm-hmm. been tossing and turning all night. That is exactly what it's like. Mm-hmm. Right. And so he goes to the living room when he wakes up and, uh, there's a stranger in the living room. And he's like, what is, who is this? And <laughs> it's Brother Longfoot. <laughs> man. I fucking love Brother Longfoot. Yeah, the he, man of many talents. He's like the most earnest, honest, just like happy person in the book. In uh-huh. any I know, of the books. He, he's, it's funny too because everybody else isn't. So everyone just is annoyed by him the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> even 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 like Logan, he's like you know he he really just wants some friends. He's just like, what the fuck is up with this guy? Yeah, like, why is he just like, oh god, <laughs> just mm-hmm. shut up already? <laughs> right, I, right. I really like how we first see him pop up here. You know, he starts talking to Logan, and at first you're thinking, oh, he's like the he's like the the guy who's gonna show us the way and stuff. And at first you're kind of like Logan, and you're like, okay, this guy sounds like he knows what he's doing. He seems capable. All right, and he's still going. He's still going. Oh, he doesn't even <laughs> care. He doesn't even care about what Logan thinks. Logan's like, um, <laughs> oh, he says, what does he say? Uh, he basically, he asks Logan a question. And then Logan's like, uh, about to a- answer. And then Brother Longfoot just continues <laughs> yeah. talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just answers his own question. I wonder if he does this whenever he meets somebody new. Oh, absolutely. Whenever he like gets to his new assignment, when he has to guide someone or whatever. He just, he just he goes through this time. whole fucking, this piece. Absolutely, he does. You know? <laughs> he's, he's just he's, that guy who won't shut the fuck up. I know, <laughs> and it's just hilarious. Is that so? He's he's very excited, right? He's very excited to meet Logan, and then he he's excited to meet him, even though he's never heard of him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an honor, a privilege, most profound. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then uh, he's like, uh, then he starts talking about his skill for navigating. Well, it, which is one of his many. Remarkable talents. Um, <laughs> here we get a little like sneak peek into like what's going to happen in that they're going to go to the edge of the world. And Logan's like, what? Yeah. Uh, but this is what happens when Logan doesn't ask what's happening, right? When he doesn't, if you don't want to know what Baez has in plan, has in store, then, you know, it's what you get. It's what you get. <laughs> uh, they're just like how kind of tone deaf um brother longfoot is like this bit where he asks like at the edge of the world asks logan suspiciously and he's just like yes we're both excited and it's yeah like, he's like what? we're equally excited <laughs> <laughs> oh and then bias comes into the room right and he's like this must be our navigator and then longfoot does the same shtick with him you know and bias is he's he's taken aback like you know by his excitable nature he looks at Logan. Logan's just like, oh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> He's just, he shrugs. Yeah, I, I, I love how Bias looks at him like, this guy's going to be fucking annoying, huh? <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, it's going to be a long journey. And I love how the um, Stephen Pacey's like, performance in this section is exactly, he just sounds so tired. Everyone's just like, right, okay. <laughs> and just like completely fucked, fed up with him already. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it's like the tone is set. Like Brother Longfoot's tone is so important too. Like the way that Pacey uh, reads his character doing things, mm-hmm. uh, it is always so chipper and cheery. Whenever he's not happy, you can always tell instantly. And yeah. it it also plays really well as contrast for the other characters. Like you were saying, like everyone else is like, okay, <laughs> and he's like, yeah. yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. And I love how he just he just like exaggerates so much. He's like, "No, uh, to sail in slow vessels is not my way. I will find you the fastest ship in all of Adua. Fly like the breath of God." We shall. And he's just like going on this <laughs> massive speech about yeah, the right. ship. And just, <laughs> no, fast is fine. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> just fast. Just, just chill out. <laughs> and then um, he he co- commissions a Longfoot to go and charter a ship for their journey, right? And he tells Logan, "You should probably accompany him." And during their walk, Longfoot starts talking about the different cities he's been to. Uh, uh, he he mentions Shaffa. He mentions Osprey, Westport, right? Dagoska. Yeah. But his heart, his heart lies with Talons. Which is a nice little tidbit, nice little uh, Easter egg for an yeah. important city to, soon to come. And I like that because it's not, I would say it's not too much of a spoiler to say that we actually go to most of those places in these books. So even yeah. this early that, you know, they're not going to appear in the trilogy, but mm-hmm. it's nice to get a bit of world building, even though it's, you know, few and far between. I think that stuff kind of sticks in your head, mm-hmm. especially yeah. with these great descriptions. Yeah. And he, I like how he's, uh, he maintains it, you know, like mm. uh, Talons is that way. Like it is pretty. <laughs> but only whenever you're overlooking the city, not whenever you're actually in the city. Yeah, like my cities, I think. <laughs> right, yeah. It's like, oh, you, I love your city, it's so beautiful. I'm like, yeah, but you don't actually live here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I like this little uh, uh, little tidbit that Longfoot, you know, one of his many soliloquies, the, he talks about how, like, it was just only noblemen and commoners, uh, and it was simple, and then now there's trade and merchants and bankers and everything, and now a rich commoner has power, too. So is he still a commoner, or is he a nobleman, or something different? Very complicated. Like, yeah, I... I, I mm -hmm. Basically, Bias is yeah. He said, like you guys said, he goes to buy a ship, and, and uh, he tells Logan to go with him. Logan doesn't really want to, but he goes with him anyways. And I like it when he says that as well because it it, it kind of shows you too. And through the whole series, Brother Longfoot, everybody is annoyed by him, but he's actually a pretty smart, observant dude who has who does have a lot of skills and talents. But mm. it's like that talented guy that you knew growing up who it happens to be good at everything but also like to talk about how good he is at everything. And it's like, right. dude, shut and, the fuck up. <laughs> and he's tone deaf. That's true. Yeah, and he's tone yeah. deaf. So. But I, you're right, though, uh, Jeff. I do like how he is, like, actually smart and actually makes these really kind of philosophical uh, mm -hmm. thoughts. But Logan also just doesn't care about those kinds of things. So Right. He's, exactly. he's too... It's too hot and it's too crowded for him. And then uh, Longfoot is just, like, crowded. <laughs> We were stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's just such a one-upmanship kind of guy. Right. Just, Everybody just... knows that kind of person. So I'm like, oh, no, you call this yeah. hot? You call yeah. this cold? You call oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. Right? He starts talking about the sh palace in Shaffa or the temple in Shaffa during mo Which morning is... prayer. Yeah, that, I was just going to say that that, um, that temple that temple there is, I'm pretty sure that's the uh, great southern library that... Uh, Oh. Kalul has turned into like his into the priest temple, which is where you know they send the ser the uh, slaves to go and get eaten. Well, that I was thought, um, Sarkant. I, yeah, I thought it was out of Sh Shaffa, the Southern Library. Um, I thought it was like what George said, Sarkant, Sark Sarkant. I don't know now. We should know this. We are the <laughs> south of the world. <laughs> we, we really oh shit. Know this. Now, to be uh, fair, to be fair, like the southern mentions are so few and far between that sometimes when you don't, I, you haven't gotten to it yet, you're like, I don't remember <laughs> because it's freaking. You, you, it's not like with the north where you know every other location because they always talk about it. You, they never talk about the south, you know. So, mm -hmm. well, cut us some gonna... slack, people. All right, get off our back. <laughs> well, let me let me help you out. Let me help you out. Uh, the libraries of Juvens. Uh, it looks like it's uh, Sarkant. Yeah. Oh, George. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's George. not. It's not. You know. It's not um, unreasonable to say that this is probably like the biggest. It might be like a um, like a real world allegory to like say like Mecca. Right. It's like the it, center yeah. of the religion rather than you know where the where the prophet himself lives because he's not going to live in the place, is he? Nah. No. No. That's good point. Yeah. He's going to be uh, <laughs> taking baths in, like, white wine and humans <laughs> and blood. And you. you know, he's, he's, you know <laughs> he shits on a golden toilet like, you know, Mr. Trump, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Wait a minute. Right. back to the chapter, uh, you know, besides talking about the different cities that, you know, he's been to and that we will go to, too, uh, he decides to take a shortcut, and Logan's, like, apprehensive. Logan's like, are you... You sure, buddy? And then he, he's Longfoot like... gets, like, hurt. He's, like, dis <laughs> he's dismayed. He's like, could you really? Could you doubt? actually doubt me? <laughs> and then he goes, possible? Right, and then he goes, wait, wait, wait. That's true. Um, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it's like, okay, calm he, down. He, it's, like, it's like when you're teaching a kid, like, oh, oh he doesn't know yet. Oh, let me, yeah. let me correct him. He, he will learn. He will see how great I am. And, and then they immediately just walk into this trap. <laughs> oh my god. There wasn't even a trap oh. until Lo uh, Longfoot made their presence way too, like, no. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> whipping his cash out and like, oh, oh we got enough or I don't know. Lo Logan's yeah. like, man, I'd like to... Logan's like, oh, there's some. There's a lady over here. I mm -hmm. I'd take some money to go... Bias um, uh, needs change, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, He's like, are you sure you want one of these whores? He was like, mm. he actually makes mention of us, of us, of us, of a place that's mentioned la later in the second book, of uh, where they train, unfortunately, train slave girls to, mm. to have uh, professional sex. <laughs> that's the way he makes it sound. Yeah, and, it's like uh, they're trained in the arts. 
Yeah, and they and it's actually that's brought up again later, but I just thought that was an interesting little note there is that it's been brought up all the way back here and then gets mm-hmm. brought up later on. Yeah, what's the name of the place? Um Old Knob, uh, I think uh, it is. Old Knob, yeah. Yeah. yeah Old Knob. Yeah, I mean here, you know, cuz they're one of the alleyways that they're going through, there's like, you know, ladies of the night, shall we say? And Logan well, like, they're, they're the slaves, aren't they? So it's a bit, uh, it's a bit, uh, no, 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 not in the union, right? Oh, uh, oh when he's talking about Sapani and that, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, when they're, uh, you know, ladies of the night, isn't that what they call prostitutes? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. So Logan sees a couple of these prostitutes and he's like, hmm, that one there. And he asks Longfoot about, you know, how much money I guess he can borrow, uh, and Log and Longfoot, he just makes their purse, which is a large purse because it's bulging, right? From the description we got earlier, and he's just like shaking it. He's just making all the noise. He's like advertising their their money, and then Logan's like, "Um, you sure you want to do that?" And then next thing you know, they're surrounded, and Logan's pissed. He's like, "Subtlety isn't one of your talents, is it?" <laughs> yeah. and I like, oh no, I am a straight talking man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a straight talking man, as you'll see. You oh oh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we should also mention though that is is gene you know like excitable as Longfoot is the fact that he's like cool with bed slaves is like um dick. exactly yeah it kind of gives you a little peek into his morals there that he isn't yeah. the best yeah then again this is a historical fictional fantasy thing and yeah of course. Pro- you're right shouldn't get engaged in presentism and all that but fucked up Longfoot fucked up um. So they get surrounded, and then Logan is forced to defend themselves. He had to smash one guy in the face with an elbow and, and took his knife. But then, you know, he was able to convince the other two guys, because they were surrounded by three. And he was like, listen, I'll give you the coins that are in my hand. That's what you're worth to me. No more. You know, and I'll just toss this, and then we'll go, and we'll, you know, go be on a merry way. And then they looked at the guy with the smashed face, and they're like, all right, it's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> and then um and then they walk away and Longfoot almost gets stabbed by Logan because he just claps him on the shoulder. And Logan didn't realize that he was hiding. He was so good quiet and so good at hiding, he was just right behind Logan's back. <laughs> yeah. It'd be so funny too if the other guys didn't even realize whether Longfoot was there. Like, oh, where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he says that combat isn't one of his many talents, but that's where his skill at hiding comes into play. He's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> And this, it sounds so funny, too, like, you know, within the context of the book, we're kind of meant to believe, like, oh, man, you what a coward. But really, uh, I don't really blame him. That's actually a good skill to have. <laughs> and yeah. It's like, if it, Brother Longfoot, yeah, he's annoying, but, like, also, he's, he, I mean, he's got everything right. He does everything what he's supposed to do, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. other than the yeah. fact that he's annoying, he's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he's annoying. And his view on, uh, you know, bed slaves is in acceptable but he is pretty funny <laughs> he'd definitely be more pleasant to like spend an afternoon with you know he's mm-hmm. probably the one the one character in the book you'd actually like to have a conversation with right because he does actually like to talk actually yeah. interestingly though it's like some of these characters you actually wouldn't mind spending um like the first day with them but it's after the first day you want to spend time with them like logan mm-hmm. would be quite welcoming quite a good conversationalist but the more you got to know him, the more you start getting worried that he was going to just chop your head off for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Baez, when you first meet Baez, he's like the nicest man. Uh, yeah, but then over time, you start just feeling a certain pressure, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then Kwai, you know, maybe a little inept. Okay, Harrison, but he's a nice boy. And then you get tired of his laziness and be like, fuck this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. But anyways... <laughs> So oh, these, these these guys come out of the woodwork seeing uh, all this money, and they're like, "Hey, that's a lot of money for a little man." Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that, yeah. And Logan Logan's like, "All right, I'll I'll deal with this, I guess." So, I mean, it's it's a pretty short little sequence where he basically just intimidates them, and is like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> and he has this whole like still alive moment and everything. And Brother Longford's like, "Man, you're quite good at that." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like how he does that as well. Like he comes in, starts this argument with these guys, and then just fucks off. <laughs> it's like, all right, see, so yeah, you can deal with it. Well done. Good one. Mm-hmm. Good, good yeah. job. Good job. <laughs> Did a great job. Um, 
Any other notes about that chapter? No, no, no. Go into the racing and everything. No, it's just a fun little chapter. Okay, okay. Where would you rate it then, Harrison? Um, I think I'd rate it probably um, a three. Oh. Um, and it's basically just because the only thing that we get in here is just Brother Longfoot. It's just fun and it's a great, but it like doesn't actually do anything. You know what I mean? Like it's just him. Like um, here's Brother Longfoot, and it's it's entertaining. Uh, but they uh, and I'm glad it's in here. But also like it's almost unnecessary, but it is necessary for Brother Longfoot because he's such a unique character. So it's that's that's I think it's a three for me. It's not bad or anything. Again, right. none 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 of it's bad. No, I understand. I honestly, Harrison, that's my score too for this chapter three. Oh, be three sweet. threes. Three out oh, of oh trifecta? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a very short chapter. Uh, you know, again, not much happens, but you know, just brought Brother Longfoot himself is enough to bring it up to a three, right? <laughs> yeah. That and a little bit of the world building that we get. Mm-hmm. Right. The yeah, the world building is nice. It's a nice little addition. Mm. Okay, look at that. Trifecta right off the bat. How does it make you guys feel? Makes me feel like yeah. simpatico. Oh. I thought I was special. <laughs> I thought I was special. Damn, George. The oh, fuck. Me and Harrison, I guess, will just fuck off. And that was me who said that. What are you talking about, Jeff? Oh, I thought. I thought you must George, be tired. I thought, I, I thought. I thought George was just like uh, eh, whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I thought George. Said, I know it's a joke, oh, man. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, too, we're too. I'm too hungover. Is this the end? <laughs> this, no. <laughs> <laughs> if this is the end, oh my god, that would be. We had no kind of working chemistry whatsoever. Then, <laughs> if that was the case, <laughs> that's all it took, right? It's just one that's tiny argument. Took. That's it. That's it. Son of a bitch, you didn't think it was special. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so let's move on to our question of the week. And we kind of switched it up the, this time. George, you want to take it away? Yeah, so this time I think we're going to ask you guys a question because I've been thinking about this a lot. There's a lot of fan casting for, you know, specific characters and things like that on the subreddits especially. But I think what would be interesting is who would you like to direct the series? If it even be, you know, like a TV or uh, films or anything like that, who do you think would be the best? So, Jeff, do you want to give me your uh, your choice then? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, George, I believe you mentioned. You know, I'm not going to talk about what you mentioned because you might actually want to use them. I like a couple of choices. Nicholas Winden Refin, Refin. Do you know he did Valhalla and uh, Only God Forgives and that other movie with Ryan Gosling, A uh, Drive. Ooh. Okay, the very stylized kind of thing, especially if you watch that movie Valhalla with Mad Mads Mikkelsen, it's it's pretty graphic. So I'm like, oh, he could do the violence pretty well. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I like him, and I have one more in my head. Just give me a minute. Uh, maybe Harrison, you want to chime in before, while I think of my other guy. I had him. Fuck I'm him. trying to think of my guys too, because like I had I had some idea, but one one of them I was thinking that might be good. Is uh is Matt Reeves? Uh, he did the Cloverfield uh, paradox. He also did the uh, Planet of the Apes movies, famously. He also did the new Batman movie. Um, I just really like his style, like cinematically uh, and theme wise. He's really good at that stuff, and I just think it'd be really unique to see. I think uh, like see what he would be able to come up with with the characters because he's able to show a lot of character um, with his directing style. And I think that would be work out really well for the characters themselves. But I'm not sure he'd be the best overall, but I really like him for the character aspect. Mm, I like that. I like both of those, actually. They're two that I would never have come up with in a million years as well, which is good. Mm -hmm. I, myself, I, I, I like yeah. Guy Ritchie for this. Yeah, Guy Ritchie's if, you, if, if anybody's ever seen a Guy Ritchie film, Snatch or Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, you know, it's just very, it's very quick, it's very snappy. Mm -hmm. Lots of snap cuts, lots of people like explaining as they're walking and doing stuff like that. And I think that would mesh really well with uh, Joe's writing style. I like that choice a lot. And especially I... if you watch his film, The um, Legend of King Arthur, 
because that's sort of like a fantasy film and he does that pretty well even though that wasn't very well received yeah mm, yeah but like snatch lock stock two smoking barrels um okay because my computer just went to sleep sorry um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna put a poll up when this episode mm-hmm. comes out so you guys vote if you know you like those three or just give us your suggestions and we'll talk about it next week yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome yeah oh uh my second guy guillermo del toro oh yeah you. i was gonna i was going to mention him as well i was i was trying to think of my other guy so i think he would be pretty yeah, good at do, it i think he'd be great at it too but yeah please everyone uh we'll put up a i think you said a poll george or a post or something on reddit yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. And same thing on social media. We'll, we'll you know, do it on Facebook or Instagram. You know, trying to encourage you guys to follow us once again. <laughs> um, and, ho- and hopefully we can discuss that again uh, on our next episode. Um, <clears throat> so then we'll move on over to our second chapter read-through. I believe, George or Harrison, did you want to take it? Uh, yeah, sure. So, her uh, kind fight everything. So we find Nefero and Yulwe have just made it to what seems like Dagoska. So they've made it on their long journey so far. Because their entire arc so far is just them being going to Dagoska. So it's nice <laughs> that they've actually got there. <laughs> and um, Yulwe says, you know, that they're, they've got to pass through this enormous army and the Eaters are there as well. So obviously... The, the, Yorway goes off to scout ahead to see if there's a way through, and Pharaoh just runs away immediately. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that he is. She's like <laughs> been planning this out and shit. And I, I remember the first time I read this, I was like, "Bro, what the hell are you doing?" <laughs> he yeah. was a nice guy. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You fucking I'm idiot. <laughs> but also, like, I mean, it makes sense for her character. But goddamn, it's a yeah. stupid move. Right. <laughs> like for me, for a second, I was like. Why is she running away when I first read it? I was like, oh, right. She doesn't want to go north. Oh, got it. Got it. But <laughs> that's unnecessary. The man saved your life. Dude, it's not, it's not even that she doesn't want to go north. It's just that she wants to have a uh, vengeance on the Gurkish and the Gurkish are in the south. That's the mm. only reason. If the, if the Gurkish were in the north, she'd go north. <laughs> well, technically, the, nor- the Gurkish are right in front of them. And she could just kill some Gurkish right there. Yeah, yeah but that, that'd be suicide, wouldn't it? So, which she, yeah, which Pharaoh's she, goofy yeah. sometimes. She goofy. But <laughs> well, I think it is this. It's like it comes back to her main central character trait is that she's so been so badly damaged by these right. by the Gurkish and what she considers to be like the entirety of the Gurkish. Right. That it just overrides everything else. And mm-hmm. you know, even though you know Pharaoh, um, not Pharaoh, your way explains exactly what's going to happen to her. All these horrible things that are going to happen to her if she gets captured. Mm-hmm. She sort of just regressed. Yeah, she just has if one you know sole I mean. purpose. Quite yeah. yeah. She doesn't... She just kind of, you mm-hmm. know, like you said, she gets caught up in it. And she... When she gets scared, she gets reverts back. So she came over the ridge, she saw Dagoska, and she... Yeah, she'd been preparing for it. But I think she saw Dagoska and realized, like, oh, I'm about to cross the sea. And then she got freaked out by that, of, of something different, of something mm-hmm. changing. Um, you know? Maybe she doesn't feel like she's being true to herself if she's not always pursuing vengeance. Like she's, mm. you know, not not making everybody else's sacrifices worth it, not making her own sacrifice worth it if she doesn't do what she promised herself she would do. Oh, right. Like it's all for nothing. Right. Yeah. So that's why she's always like, I have to do this. I have to do this. Yeah. It's the only thing she's living for at this point. That's you know, what I mean. Yeah. It seems almost animalistic. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like instinctual, especially at this point where she basically runs as far as she can. Mm. And then just falls asleep. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because she oh. doesn't normally fall asleep. No, exactly. And then, um, But it's funny as well that she's like, oh my God, I'm like so thirsty. And obviously if you're really thirsty, you're more likely to fall asleep. So, <laughs> but she's also just swam through a river. So <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't occur to her at the time to think, oh, you know, I'll stop and get some water here. Because she's literally just like that desperate to get away. She is just not the smartest character. <laughs> she isn't that smart, but uh, that's what I mean. Like she is intelligent, but this this need and central drive of her character sort of overpowers. It clouds. It, it clouds her thinking. 
And it honestly is a common it's a common trait in in people honestly as a whole but exactly, like yeah. she is like the 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 peak extreme version of it. Mm-hmm. Whenever mm-hmm. you get obsessed with something you can't let go of it. Mm-hmm. Right. And she did talk to she mentioned it when she talked to Yulwe about it before I think in the previous chapter or so. Uh they they, they her humanity has been stripped away. Mm-hmm. They 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 whip it out of you. The right. Gurkish. Yeah. So it's hard to uh, think about what you, you know, what you want to do in life, or the bake the bakery that you want to open <laughs> when uh, you've, the vengeance you've been scarred. Yeah, just <laughs> you can have the uh... revenge rolls. <laughs> yeah, revenge rolls. Old bastard pies. <laughs> Old bastard. <laughs> Oh dear. And I like that well, that's the first thing she hear like she thinks to herself when she um falls asleep is that stupid old bastard. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a stupid fool. <laughs> ah, he's stupid. He turned around, he left me alone. Ha ha. Yeah. Also that was so funny too. It's like, are you serious? You're taking a win over that? He was helping you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then she wakes up with a start, right, George? Yep, and um, the eaters have found her. <laughs> it's just like, oh fuck! Yeah, she's they've like, just, they've oh, just found she... her immediately. Yeah, she. He's all like, I can smell you, Pharaoh. <laughs> Being really super creepy and just, I like this is like the first villain that we, or, you know, bad char- bad aligned character that we found that is actually just a pure villain. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just he's... like really, like absolutely enjoying this. Like yeah, tracking and... down this person, seeing all, all their own soldiers get killed, and they're just like, "Oh dear." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just dicking around. They're like, "Oh, huh. so yeah. Pharaoh takes out the other the other soldiers, except for the brother uh, brother and sister, or they call themselves that. They're pr- pretty sure they're not. And they're um, a man and a woman. And the the guy, the woman is like, "Oh, good show, good show," like <laughs> completely <laughs> yeah. entertained. And the guy is all like, oh, "Come here, bitch." <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And she he, shoots. She shoots the shoulders. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The soldiers, right? She uh, kills yeah, them all. Kills a few of them with arrows, and then one of them with uh, with a knife, I think. A scimitar. That's, yeah, sword. <laughs> Straight up, corrected you, George. Holy shit! All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> God damn! <laughs> damn, Harrison. Okay, that is historical. Really taking everyone to task. Um, and then what? Then he tr- she tries to attack the eaters, right? Yeah, it's uh, you know, not not great effect, to be honest, because they are no, basically but immortal hilarious. zombie people who mm-hmm. eat flesh. But it's pretty hilarious. It's yeah, it's it very hilarious. fucking funny. <laughs> like just absolutely, Pharaoh has not lost a fight yet, and she's very very proficient, probably more so than a lot of people for reasons that we'll find out later. But um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she just they just wipe the floor with her. It's not even a contest. No, it's not. And the funny thing is, he's like, "All right, well, Maljin, should we?" And then uh, just an arrow comes out of nowhere and hits him in the chest, and he's like, "Shall we begin?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is like a bit. It's very a lot of comedic elements in this fight. Mm-hmm. And also, apparently, eaters can access bullet time. Mm. Right? He runs so fast that it's like everything's in slow motion yeah this is nice as well we get like the proper um like a proper look at what the eaters are like i mean we've they've been mentioned but we haven't actually seen one yet that we know of yeah Mm -hmm. and they're like normal people don't stand a chance at all no so they are basically like the proper bad guys it's interesting too that we know not to get too spoilery but you know the the eaters are not they don't become eaters uh, these ones don't become eaters by choice so they um especially the youngest ones so uh you know i would be probably a little fucked up too if i was forced to become a cannibal and probably eat mm-hmm. somebody that i loved in order to right. make that happen mm. <laughs> and probably locked up in a cage and and commanded what to do for for years until i became completely subservient you know what yeah. I mean? Right. <laughs> so yeah. it's like these guys are the bad guys and they are like, oh, they're like the stereotypical kind of like bad people. But also um, it's a slight kind of 
you know, there's justification for them being that way. Not that it's right, but. Mm. And then we get a uh, your way shows back up again. She's he's he's obviously obviously figured out what's going on and followed on after her. <laughs> mm-hmm. And <laughs> we get a. Uh, the female eaters like, who are you, old bastard? And he's just like, I'm an old bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he's heard it so much from Pharaoh. He's like, oh, you too? <laughs> yeah, for God's sake, it's spreading. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking virus. Yeah. And then uh, sh- they're all like, yeah, we, we are coming right from the prophet Kaul himself, yo. She's coming with us. And he's like, I can't change your minds. <laughs> And then he's like sad about it. Uh. Yeah, I like this. Like he's he's trying to basically get them to go away, and they're just like, you know, first they completely dismiss him, and then he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I knew your uh, I knew your prophet guy, Kalul. Like we used to be mates. <laughs> he's just like back in uni. <laughs> oh, we'll tell, we'll give you your we'll give you him your regards when uh, we give him the news of your death, and he's just like, <sighs> <laughs> he'd like that. <laughs> And it's interesting to see that whenever they're talking about taking her, they're like, ooh, the, the prophet's going to like this one. Mm. You know, like, they're, he's obviously got some kind of plan for her. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Yul Wei is, like, all sad and shit, and then they're like, okay, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll kill both of you then, is what the eaters are like. And mm. they both pretty much die almost instantly. <laughs> as, yeah, as soon as yeah. they, like, make a move towards Yul Wei, right? Uh, one of them... Harrison, explain this. Explain to us what Yowei's magic did to them. Uh, I believe uh, Yowei's magic is that he says he, he he put fire in one and water in the other, or vice versa. And I believe what he did is just changed uh, atomically, like in their bodies through bi- through like biology, that he changed the molecules to match up with that. Because we've seen him, he can't be seen by other people, even though he's actually there. He can change the way things look. Um, you know, perception wise. So I believe like what we talked about before is that uh, he's got a sort of uh, art that allows him to affect the body uh, because he doesn't like shoot like a fireball at them or something. But, uh, you know, he just changes inside of their body. And that, that, that obviously takes like a lot of skill. Like he's managed to separate exactly just her bones and turn them to water. Yeah, which is pretty terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that is terrifying. Is I like it too because you know we've seen um, Baez use some high art, and you're like, well, that's pretty powerful. And then we see how powerful these eaters are. We know Pharaoh is formidable, and these eaters are already powerful. And ba- Yulwe dispenses them very easily, and then he basically says, "Yeah, those guys were the young eaters. They weren't even that good." And you're mm-hmm. like, Jesus. <laughs> How powerful are these people really going to be? Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. And I like how Yorway doesn't even like admonish Pharaoh or anything for running away. He's just like, all right, come on. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, she, well, for, I thought it was interesting when they were looking at her fingers, I guess, because they were, she, you know, her hand got broken, her fingers got broken in the fight, mm. if, or the ass weapon, if you could call it a fight. <laughs> and uh, she says something interesting here. She goes, you know, it doesn't hurt. Why does it never hurt? And then, then your way is like, well, they're not going to stop looking for you. So do you see why you have to come with me? And she's like, mm-hmm, I see. Yes. <laughs> he's like such a dad moment where he's like, all yeah, right. She finds uh, you at least now? for another couple of days anyway. And then she'll just uh, right. she'll run away again. <laughs> yeah, she'll, get, she'll, do, she'll do something. Oh, these teenagers, you know, <laughs> <laughs> these young whippersnappers. Just always having to rebel. <laughs> So and then then she basically passes out and that's the end of that chapter. Uh, what do you guys rate that chapter as? Uh, I reckon I'll give that one a five because I like the introduction for the eaters. Gives us like a proper scary, well, you know, the, knowing that there's so many of them out there and they're all coming for Pharaoh. I mean, I, I, that's a really good image and I do like this chapter a lot for that. Mm. Kind of raises the stakes a little bit, huh? Mm, exactly. We get a first good look at. Uh, something a bit more sinister and powerful. Yeah. Jeff, what about, okay. what about you guys? Well, uh, I'll give it a six out of nine. I liked it a lot. Uh, the, the introduction to the eaters and just the fact that even though they're basically the lowest tier of eater, eaters, they were st- still able to just wipe the floor with Pharaoh. 
uh, I was like, "Ooh, <laughs> we have some uh, some like as George said, formidable bad guys." Ooh, this is interesting. And then, uh, just I like the little bit of what's the word intrigue here with you know Pharaoh never being actually feeling pain. Like, why doesn't she feel pain? That just mm. and there's I a like little bit that. more of the character though. I didn't notice that to be honest. I like that. There's a little bit what. I said I like that. Mm, yeah, yeah. So that's a. I make. I give it a six out of nine. Um, I, I, I give it a four out of nine. I like the uh, introduction of the eaters. Um, I like that. Like I, like you said, George, it kind of raises the stakes and stuff, and uh, we get to see more of your way. And he, I like how he's also like. I believe this is the first mention of him. Uh, of we finding out that your way is connected and knows Kalul, mm. Um, mm. or the right. prophet. Um, and, um, I like that that's introduced and I'm like, oh, what's going on with that? You know, that's it. It kind of just, uh, it does, it does good world building while keeping the tension high. Um, mm. but it's a pretty short chapter and, you know, again, it's kind of one of those chapters where it's important for Pharaoh to have had this moment again, <laughs> to, for it to have <laughs> to learn the same lesson again. <laughs> but it's also like, you, we probably could have done without it. Not that it's a wasted chapter, but I think you guys know what I mean. Yeah. No, we do. We get it. We get it. Okay, so those are the chapter ratings. Hope you guys uh, enjoy that. We'll move on to our character spot. And our character spot is Brother Longfoot. Who else would it be? (laughs) (laughs) I love Brother Longfoot. He's just just wholesome. You know what I mean? Wholesome? He's he's Uh, pretty wholesome, except for the whole bed slave thing. You know, we'll just ignore that. But like you said, no 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 presentism and all that. He's just, you know, he's constantly in your face, really. And I think everybody knows this kind of person that's just constantly happy all the time. Yeah, it's like... You can wear on somebody, though. Yeah, yeah. But uh, (laughs) I think we can forgive him. We can forgive him. I I love him, personally. Mm. What were you going to say, Harrison? Um, I just, I really like... His introduction, like he has his own setup introduction. I like that you're, you're kind of meant to believe that he is a certain way. Like you're like, oh, he, this guy's, a, he's kind of like that character in the book that he gets introduced as a, not the mentor character, but the guide. He is literally the epitome of a guide character. And, and I love how he does all the things the guide's supposed to do. But at the same time, he's also like more than just the guide. Like, unfortunately, in a lot of uh, stories, when the guide character comes up, that's all they end up being. It's just the guide. And he has a lot more character to that. That He's got a negative side to him, which is the fact that he's annoying. He's clearly doesn't really, you know, he knows what he's talking about, but he's kind of self-obsessed. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I really appreciate, like, even his character like Brother Longfoot, which I'm sure we'll probably highlight again later on, um, is, you know, got so much character to him, despite him just being the guide, the side character. And, you know, that doesn't wane at all over time either. True. Yeah. He is consistently this way all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really have a character arc, so to speak. But I definitely think you're right in that he um more character than the equivalent character in another book. Mm-hmm. That's true. And he does get to meet, like, just, I guess, his effect and other characters' perception of of him. Uh, he's, honestly, everyone else's perception of him kind of is the same, isn't it? They all just go like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody's either don't know what to make of him, or they just think mm-hmm. he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's... I wonder if they did. Yeah, I think every character kind of initially questions just how good of a navigator he is, and then they're like, "Oh no, he's he's re- actually really good at it." Uh, but they're like, "Does that outweigh?" His personality. <laughs> Does it? Maybe. Maybe not. Um, and we, I guess we should, if we're going to talk about Brother Longfoot, we, we got to talk about the uh, particular accent that Pacey gives him, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. He's meant to be, I guess, of a... Sort of, you know, Indian, Pakistani, mm-hmm. Bangladeshi, that kind of accent. And I think it is well done. And I don't think it's in bad taste. To be honest, no, yeah, I, honestly, I don't think it's in bad taste. So, I mean, how else if you're gonna illustrate where he's from? I mean, especially in an audiobook, you know, like you're gonna do it via an accent. Yeah, exactly. And I think this is probably the most sort of 
no, I don't want to say foreign, but the most far removed from the other accents. So it makes sense because okay, yeah. he's obviously from somewhere that's so far away that he doesn't even say what it is. It's just like, oh, I'm from, you know, who cares? Yeah, he doesn't say where he's from, right? Not, not yet. I don't, I don't know. He might do later. He doesn't. He doesn't ever say where he's from. No. Let's see. So it's like, not even. He's from the. He's from they... the Great Order of Navigators. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's literally it. Okay. All right. Remember, All even even Logan inside this chapter makes a note that he doesn't know. He, it's impossible to tell how old he is. You know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's traveled a lot, but fuck, he could be like fifty years old. You know what I mean? Like it's just hard he to tell. Could be fifty or twenty-five, yeah. right? So get ready for my video next week. It's uh, whether Brother Longfoot is an eater or not. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's just hides well, really guys, well. Guys, what are we going to do is the Glock. When, when are we going to do all the characters who might be related to the Shanka? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. The tinfoil is strong with George. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, if you can't laugh at yourself, you know. Right. That's a good skill to have. One of my remarkable talents. Oh. <laughs> George has many. <laughs> <laughs> um anything else we want to mention about Longfoot? Like anything that kind of like comes to mind? Um like I'm interested to know how good of like how he developed the skill to navigate so well. Like I think this uh, is it's quite really... interesting cuz this isn't really like a historical thing. There isn't just like a group of people who just learn how to do this because it's sort of something that everyone has to sort of pick up. So every culture and and sort of organization needs somebody who can do this. So yeah. it's, it's quite a wide ranging sort of study. Well, I will say this though, right? Is that the, the circle of the world, like geographically, is um, very unique because everywhere knows everyone knows how to get everywhere. Like there isn't any place that's hard to get to, mm. but in order to survive, getting to where you need to go is actually a lot harder than what you think it'd be. Like if you're if you yeah you know where you had to get to the north, you can go to England or you can go to like up through Ufrith or whatever. But like if you want to get to the high places, getting all the way up there is probably super dangerous, and it's a little bit different compared to our world, uh, where. Even in medieval times, yeah, you could probably travel wherever you needed to, and you'd probably be all right. Yeah, you might get mugged, but here in the in the <laughs> circle of the world, uh, you know, you go to the west, you're going to be dealing with a whole bunch of, like, raiders and shit constantly. You go to the north, you're going to be dealing with a constant amount of warfare and, like, these super highly trained uh, uh, named men who are going to just hunt you down for no reason because, you know, King Bethod wants his taxes. Yeah, and the Union is really safe, but that's mostly Midderland, because if you go to Steric land, you're going to be dealing with a whole bunch of peasant uprisings. In the South, you know, you could just get grabbed and turned into a slave. Thond and Soldrick is not explored at all. So if you want to take the best routes, it makes sense that there would be an order of navigators, or people mm -hmm. who would guide other people who know the... not Because if you think about it, he just he doesn't just know how to get places... He knows the languages. He knows the cultures. He knows how to talk to people, even if it is annoying, you know. So, I like that as well. He does mention that that he speaks uh, Northern probably better than Logan does. Right. Even yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. It's, so it's it makes sense that you would have somebody who would, if you want to travel somewhere, you hire one of these guys, and they'll make sure you get there. Uh, and if what if you needed, it, and they may not just be navigators either. You know, like he mentions that some of them know how to fight, um, and so they could also be except him. Yeah, except him, right? He said a lot of them are really good at like in hand to hand. Like so they it seems like they basically teach a whole bunch of skills and then they hire out. And but they tend to be more more navigators than anything else. So they just happen to be the great order of nav navigators. Right. But, I don't know. That's just speculation. I like, <laughs> what I, also I like just it. thought about I I like how every order apparently has to be great. The Great Order of Magi. I know. The Great Order of <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. The Great Order of Fuckheads. <laughs> should we, should we, are we calling like ourselves that. the wrong name? Should we, should we, should we be the Great uh, Order of the Circle of the World? <laughs> that's, that's a lot to... That's a mouthful. <laughs> that's a little... <laughs> so, I mean, we can be. We can be the Great Order of... Trio? Idiots? <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't work. Idiots. We're not doing it. <laughs> idiots. The great order of idiots. 
All right. Well, that's our show, everyone. We want to thank you all again for listening and supporting this podcast. As you all know by now, this is a passion project for the three of us. <laughs> and your support does mean a lot to us. Join us next week as we cover She Loves Me Not and The Seed. And make sure you answer our question on social media when this pops up. When we're uploading this episode, we're going to put the uh, the poll up on Reddit. So go and vote and add your own answers for the director that you'd like to uh, see adapt Joe Abercrombie's stuff. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any podcast app that you use to listen to podcasts on. And please make sure to rate and review this podcast as it helps to spread our reach. Thank you all again for listening. God has seen fit to bless me with many remarkable talents, but combat is not one of them. <laughs>